since we're dealing with hot topics like the Israel-Hamas war, whether it's yesterday's election results ch changed the conversation about the presidential race, we need some insight from a pro who has been through all this before. Please welcome back the former Secretary of State, the amazing Hillary Clinton. So welcome back. Welcome, welcome back. Yes. Welcome back. It's so Thank great to you. have you it's back. It's really here. great being here. Wow. And what an amazing audience yeah. you have. Today. You can tell we're trying to keep you for the whole show. Oh, yes. Yes. They're just Hillary yes. more Hillary Clinton. Hillary, Hillary, Hillary Clinton. my calendar. Yeah. Right here. Right here. Well, yesterday was election day yes. and it was a huge win for Democrats, yeah. uh, especially in Ohio, Kentucky, Virginia, with voters sending a clear message on abortion rights. Mm -hmm. What was your takeaway? Exactly that, that um, the election uh, yesterday across the country showed a couple of things. One, that women are standing up for themselves and they're voting for their rights and we have enough good men who are coming along with us and we're winning a lot of important races. Um, and secondly, that People are moving away from extremism. You know, they, they want to have leaders who are trying to do the best they can to take care of our real problems, not make up stuff and cause all kinds of commotion. Uh, and it's kind of like getting back to the real business of governing. I thought that Governor Bashir, a Democrat yeah. in Kentucky, yeah. who has been a very good, solid governor, but also ran on abortion, had one of the best ads of the entire campaign mm. about a young woman who'd been raped and who said, you know, this should be my decision. Um, and he, so he went right into it. He also ran on red flag laws yeah. that if you know somebody is dangerous, they should not be able to buy a gun. Yep. Yeah. We ought to know that by now. And so a really good feeling about the election yesterday. You did. Yeah. Well, we're very lucky to have you now following yesterday's results, but also one year out from the presidential election. Mm -hmm. yeah. So last night unequivocally had some major wins for Democrats. Abortion is hands down an incredibly motivating issue, but there are a number of polls out there that spell real trouble for President Biden. I'm curious if there was a disconnect between perhaps the brand of the Democratic Party and President Biden. And I think one thing you and I agree on is Donald Trump is an existential threat to this country. Mm -hmm. But is Joe Biden, when five, four out of five battleground polls have him losing to Trump, the best person to take him on? Yes, he is. And he's done a really good job as president. And, yeah. you know, I, I like to evaluate people in public life on what have they gotten done for us. Yeah. And, you know, you look at his record, despite all of the odds, he's really produced positive results. But more than that, we are a year out. And if you go back and look at comparable presidencies. Barack Obama was behind at mm -hmm. this point yeah. in his reelection. Yeah. My husband was behind at this point in his reelection. You know, until the candidates, the nominees are actually chosen, people are always saying, well, maybe there's somebody better out there. Let me look over here. You know, oh, I see somebody I like, or I just saw, you know, him give a speech or her position. That's natural. Mm -hmm. But what I think is important is that as you say, Alyssa, that Joe Biden uh, is not only uh, proved that he's done a good job, but look at the alternative and, and look at what we would face as a country. And I think the election results yesterday should be very good news for President Biden. Yes. And I certainly see it that way. I hope yeah. so. <laughs> so, you know, this country has a lot of problems. Um, and the main one is named Donald Trump. <laughs> okay, I can't personally believe that this loser has so many people who still think that he could make a decent president. He's been criminally charged with 91 counts. I mean, he's practically got one foot in jail and another one on a banana peel, this guy. <laughs> and they still say, oh, we still like him. What do you make of that? 
Oh, I, I don't know, Joy, didn't you just write a play about this? It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> funny. <laughs> you know, by uh, the way, you know, Miss, Mrs. Clinton did win the popular vote. Yeah, oh, so, yeah. <laughs> I continue to believe that you won. I don't care what they say. You know, but look, I, I think you are absolutely right to sound the alarm. And, and what I think, um, again, we saw yesterday is that a lot of people may not be telling pollsters they're mm -hmm. reconsidering, but they are reconsidering. Oh, you think so? I do. I, I think that the chaos that comes with him uh, is just not attractive to a majority of people anymore. But look, there are people who still, you know, support him. They say they're gonna vote for him. We just have to limit the number of those right. people and reach out to those who are having second thoughts who say, well, you know, I thought he would have done better or how much longer is he gonna do this rigged election thing or look at all the problems he's got in the court system. So I think we have to keep reaching out to the people who uh, are open to looking at the damage that he would cause if he were ever anywhere near the White House I mean, again. Cost a lot of, well, I think we should lock him up now. <laughs> well, some, <laughs> well some, of, some of the polls reflect um, that voters, that if he is convicted, voters will change their, their opinion right. about him and right. won't vote for him. That's so right. I, I Even the ones who are supporting him now. Exactly. So yeah. I, trust, I trust that our country is why smart do you think, enough I'm just curious. Why do you think that's true? Just because he's convicted. They don't believe anything now. Why, why would they believe there that? There are some that will change there, their that, vote. That is exactly what these yeah. polls have, have shown. You know, I think when you are... Look, it, it's any, any kind of relationship. When you're 100% committed, it's really hard to say you were wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, you that's know, people true. go... Why are you still with this guy? And you're just like, well, you know, I thought he would do this, or I liked what he did there. And it's hard for people to separate. And I did say, and I believe this, and there are a lot of other people, not just me, saying this. Liz Cheney said it recently, that there's a kind of cult-like dimension yes. here. Yeah. You know, he he's like a walking id. You know, in psychology, <laughs> you've got yeah, the yeah. ego and the superego <laughs> yeah. and the id. And so a lot of people go, oh man, did you hear what he said? It's like watching a constant entertainment show and so people get hooked into that and they don't want to give it up because it is you know kind of entertaining and interesting to watch the chaos yeah. um yeah. well yeah. i think that your loss to trump in um 2016 will go down in history as one of the most pivotal times in our country one of the most pivotal moments in our country um and it's still reeling from you know trump's policies i think um and the deep divisions that he sowed in this country mm -hmm. What, in your view, would happen if he were to be reelected? Oh, I can't even I can't even think that because I think it would be the end of our country as we know it. And I don't say that lightly. You know, I hated losing, and I especially hated losing to him because I had seen so many warning signals during yes. the campaign. But I immediately said, "Look, we have to give him a chance. We've got to support." you know, the president we have, and I meant it, and I tried really hard, and then literally from his inauguration on, it was nothing but, you know, accusing people of things, making up facts, de denying the size of the crowd at his own inauguration, and everything that I worried about, I saw unfolding, and so I, I think that he'd be even worse now, yeah. because he was somewhat restrained, believe it or not, wow. in, in the first term, by people who he hired mm -hmm. because he thought they would go along with him and they stood up to him. Mm -hmm. And so now he is going to, if he were ever near the Oval Office again, find people who have no principles, no conscience, who are totally tied mm. you know, to his fortunes, literally, mm -hmm. and therefore would do whatever he said. And so the, the wreckage is almost unimaginable. You know, when I was Secretary of State, I used to talk about one and done. And what I meant by that is that people would get legitimately elected mm -hmm. and then they would try to do away with elections mm -hmm. and do away with opposition and do away with a free press. And you could see it in countries where, well, Hitler was mm -hmm. duly elected, That's right? right? Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden, somebody with those tendencies, though dictatorial, authoritarian tendencies would be like, oh, okay, we're going to shut this down. We're going to throw these people in jail, and, and they didn't usually telegraph that. 
Trump is telling us yes. what he yes. intends yes. to right. do. To listen yes. to Take that. him at his word. Yes. The man <laughs> means to throw people in jail who disagree with him, yeah. shut down legitimate press right. outlets, do yeah. what he can to literally undermine the rule of law yeah. and our country's values. He will use the military to stop protesters. He's going to do it. He's not going to do a whole bunch of stuff right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, right? Not, yet. not right now. Well, no, not right yet.